I don't know why you guys always complain about drawing hands. <laughs> oh, well, you're such a my, master. My, I don't even know what mine could resemble. It looks almost like a dead flower, but... <laughs> This is so going on YouTube. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Booth. I am joined today by my good friend, Don Wynn. How you doing, man? Doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. Another another beautiful Sunday in uh, San Diego, I guess. I don't know. But... <laughs> hey, I'm yeah. sorry for everything that's happening. It was actually a really nice day weather-wise. It really was. It really was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I woke up and everything was great, and then I turned on the phone and then i stopped looking at the phone for a little bit so <laughs> as you yeah as you should uh you know well don uh i know you uh and i i met you i would say probably a couple years ago at a signing for free comic day my mind isn't playing tricks on me uh outside of i want to say comic club and then yeah. just a couple months later we were on a panel together i want to thank in san diego comic-con for yeah. creative so creator connection looking- yeah. yeah, that's the way the world works. But so since I know you, you don't have to introduce yourself to me. But for anybody who doesn't know you, please tell us who you are and what you're about, sir. Okay, uh, I'm Don Wynn. Most people know me by my moniker, uh, Winging It, which is my last name. If anybody can see my last name back there. It's uh, that, I-N-G-I-T. You can find me on most social media under that. Twitch, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Facebook, um, and a lot of people know me from running uh, a sketch blog or doing Inktober. Uh, As Terry just said, uh, a friend and I did Inktober two years in a row. Uh, The first year we did it, we had met at Comic Creator Connection panel. Uh, It's fantastic writer Andy Nordvall, who does a comic called uh, My Roommate, The Internet. And he had this pitch for me, which was phenomenal. And I was like, I unfortunately don't have time to work on that. Uh, but he had come back and was like, Hey, do you do Inktober? And I was like, yes. He's like, would you consider doing Inktober with me? And he pitched me this idea of doing a story that accompanied the art. And I believe we're the very first team to take all 31 of Jake Parker's prompts and go beginning to end as a complete cohesive story. And our book was a, a number one Kindle book and a top 100 in print on Amazon. It's called Siren Song. The easiest way to find it is to look up Andy Nordvall. Uh, his last name is spelled N-O-R-D, V is in Valley, A-L-L. Um, and it's a ph- phenomenal book. Uh, I don't know how he wrote it in 31 days. Uh, it, it blows my mind. I like to describe it as Pirates of the Caribbean meets Pan's Labyrinth. So uh, I'm known for that. I just uh, did a Kickstarter last year called Pablo the Gorilla. It's about a cyborg girl that delivers pizza, wants to live a normal life, but unfortunately the government that created him wants their property back <laughs> and also being hunted by something a little more sinister. We ran that on Kickstarter. It was a success funded at, if I'm not mistaken, it was 151%. And it has a variant covered by Eisner winner, Dustin Wynn, who's not related to me, but if he says he is, I will totally roll with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm also trying to get nominated, I'm trying to get nominated on the Ringo Awards too. I know we've talked about this. But uh, Pablo qualifies for the Ringos, and I was slated to be at Baltimore Comic Con this year. Uh, I don't know if that's still happening. We'll see Mm -hmm. Uh, with this whole COVID situation. But I thought it would be funny, especially if we could get Dustin Wynn nominated for Best Cover for Pablo, because he'll most likely go up against himself for Ascender or like whatever (laughs) other amazing covers he does. Uh, So I think it would be funny to have him go up against himself. See which which uh, which Dustin wins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> you got your fingers, your hands, your toes, like in just about everything. Out I'm, there. I'm trying. That. I always tell people I want all the cookies in all the jars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hope I'm not spreading myself too thin. Fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing that. Um, I was part of a short film that I storyboarded, Retro, mm-hmm. uh, which was done with my friend Aaron Lindenthaler. And he had taken my storyboards and he wanted final storyboards and took that and made a motion comic and submitted it to a short film festival. And it got picked. It got picked for one of LA's oldest uh, short film festivals, Dances with Films. It was their 23rd year last year. And we were one of the official selections. Wow. So we're taking that and we're moving forward with it as a comic. 
And he's actually shooting it live action with uh, Rena Wilson, who's an actor that was in Mike and Molly and is currently in Good Girls and is playing the titular character. So fingers crossed that that goes <laughs> good as well. Uh, I'm on a project which I don't know if I can talk about or mention who I'm doing it with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying it's with Michael Tanner, who's an amazing creator, does yeah. Junior Break of the Apocalypse uh, with Oni Press. So we're working on something together. And then, um, again, just more anthology stuff. Drawn out conversation is we'll take a picture uh, and we'll draw it um, as we talk. So okay. I, have, I have 10 questions that I'll be okay. asking you throughout this, uh, this uh, exercise. Right. I am a little bit handicapped here because I am not an artist. So what we're going to do, uh, if you're game, I'll draw with my given hand, my right hand. Okay. You draw with your off hand. Does that sound fair? Okay. I got it. It's like okay. the one hand tied behind your back kind of a fight. There you go. Yeah, that make it fair. Level the playing field a little bit. So you've seen a picture of uh, an example of my art. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to show everybody what my art looks like uh, here, and I'll post it up. So this is Miss Marvelous Cosplay. She's a friend of mine on Instagram. Okay. If you have, if you're not following her, if you haven't seen her, please do follow her because she's the, the the amount of detail that she puts into each and every one of her costumes is amazing. Uh, and she was nice enough to let us. Uh, to do her honor and hopefully we can, she won't be too offended by what we uh, come up with. <laughs> Question number one for you. Okay. What is the one thing that you, uh, that most people wouldn't guess just by looking at you? And most people, you know, it's funny. I still haven't uh, come up with a legit answer for this. Um, I have a science background. In fact, I almost became a dentist. Uh, huh as I said before, and I think if you just see me at a comic book convention, you just go, oh, that dude draws comics. But my background is actually uh, science. Um, I worked in research for a really long time, especially uh, in high school. I did uh, oncology research, uh, so I was doing medical research. As a high school kid, um, I did neurological research in college, um, and I worked for the Rand Corporation for almost 10 years doing social policy research. Uh, so there you go. I have a science background. That's the background. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, my uh, when you told me that you had done tagging, my head automatically went to like every '90s movie I could think of where there was the tagger and they were just yeah. tagging up on a like a bridge somewhere. Uh, so <laughs> I, mean, I am glad that you clarified the <laughs> the extent of your tagging background. Question number two: Marvel or DC movies? Who's winning so far, and why are they winning? Okay, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but I believe Marvel is winning that. And for me, the Marvel movies are just more fun and uh, cohesive. And that's what it comes down to. Uh, the DC movies, you know, there, there's a lot of stylistic choices, but I don't think since anything in the Zack Snyder era hasn't been great aside from they're starting to make some headway. I feel like Wonder Woman was really knocked it out of the park. Oh yeah. That, Wonder Woman was great. And then uh, Shazam actually was very entertaining uh, to me. And I like Aquaman, believe it or not, but just like the bigger stuff, like I wasn't into justice league. I really did not like Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Question number three, Star Wars. More Skywalker saga or kill it already? Move on to something else. Why? Kill it already. Kill it already? You ready for yeah. something new? Okay, so here's the thing, and this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I was actually um, okay with Last Jedi. In fact, I thought Last Jedi was the movie that Star Wars needed as a franchise. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people in, I guess, our generation of Star Wars fans... Uh, saw it as a huge fu, but here's the thing, man. Kids love that movie. Have you talked to a little kid who's seen that movie, and they were just like, "What is this? Like, why did that thing explode?" And you know, I have friends who have kids, and they're like all about Kylo Ren. And The Force Awakens to me was like, it was to reboot the franchise. Uh -huh. I felt like Last Jedi corrected a lot of the mistakes of the original prequel. They were like, "Let's go back and retcon the original prequels. We're going to present the same ideas." But we're just going to do them a little differently. And then, 
uh, Rise of Skywalker was a letdown for me. Yeah. It's it's one of the Star Wars movies I've only seen it twice. I haven't rewatched it. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's it's now uh, one behind Clone Wars for me. I've seen Clone Wars like three times. So that's in the category of least watched Star Wars movies. Wow. Wow. And, you know, that's not to say I hate it and I hate Star Wars. I just, I was let down because I thought like they had an, an opening and a chance to do something insane and like different. Question number four, and that is, uh, what are five cameos that you would like to see in the upcoming seasons of Mandalorian? Like five returning characters from either the movies or from the cartoons or the whatever. Uh, who who would please little Don's heart to see them in Mandalorian? Well, the the rumor mill or what's supposed to happen is Rosario Dawson is going to be uh, Ahsoka Tana, right? Right. I would like to see m more of like different species uh, appear. Um, like if they had a Mon Cal Jedi kind of a character yeah. that you know, uh, you know the Clone Wars series. Uh, they brought in the the Black Saber from Death Watch. Like that whole thing was super exciting to me. Like when that happened, like it was so exciting. Even my wife knew what it was. <laughs> That's that thing. I was like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it's. I, I had the same feeling whenever I saw the troop transport, and knowing that I held that in my hands at one point, like, and be like, oh my god, oh my god, nice. <laughs> so for me, I can't imagine like if somehow, like in the background somewhere, like Dengar is just like sitting at a bar somewhere, or, or you know, just something like that. Like, yeah, like a Dengar or like Boss or any of these like bouncing. <laughs> yeah. Question number five. Conventions or store signings, which is uh, a better fit for you? Ooh, that's a tough one, man. Um, I love both, but honestly, in terms of like business, it's got to be cons. Um, but you know, it's like either way, it, it comes down to outreach, and I would, I love having the opportunity to like sell. There's something to be said about being able to look somebody in the eye, shake their hand, mm -hmm. um, to make a transaction and know that they enjoyed what they're getting, uh, you know, or even looking forward to like a commission or whatever. Um, there's just something special about that. And I feel like, you know, we, we do a service uh, if fans like our work by providing that. Number, question number six, what is the weirdest commission you've ever been asked to do? Oh, man, I just did it recently, and uh, I hope the guy who got it was happy with it because I saw him recently at a, a convention. He was looking for another artist, but it was uh, to draw... He was doing... He does. He's a mermaid fan, and it wasn't just draw a mermaid, but it was draw a seasonal mermaid, so the mermaid had to be fall-themed. Oh. So the mermaid I did was uh, pumpkin spice-themed. <laughs> She was uh, she's sort of hanging out on the seaside with a PSL, just kicking uh -huh. it. <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> All right, man. Question number seven. Uh, top three dream comic book properties to work on. <laughs> Licensed properties uh, from anywhere. Top three. Oh, my God. Uh, um. Spider-Man is like yeah. one, I think. Just because, you know, I, time and time again, if you look through my boxes, I think I have the majority of my comics are going to be Spider-Man. Like, it takes up the largest chunk of my collection. You know, I, I really feel like I would do a good job on Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I like drawing, like, twisty, oozy characters. And I think Swamp Thing fits that category. Um yeah, Swamp Thing Spider-Man I think would be fun. And maybe The Crow. The Crow or Ninja Turtles. It's kind of a hard toss-up. Because those are two properties I think are great. And I would like a crack at them. Man, I, I could see you killing the Ninja Turtles. Just That would that would be so cool. Question number eight. This is a fight, fight to the death. Who would win? Voldemort 
or Doctor Strange and explain why? Oh, I'm gonna say Steven because of sheer willpower, right? Like if Voldemort couldn't beat Harry, how would he beat Steven? <laughs> Couldn't even be the teenage boy? God. Yeah. I don't care if he's the chosen one. <laughs> and now he's going to go up against, like, an equally egotistical doctor, surgeon yeah. guy? Come on. <laughs> We're getting down to the wire, man. Question number nine. Uh-huh. All right. This one uh, you can give me some background on. Top five people to sit on a panel with, living or dead. I would love to have Stan the Man Lee on the panel. I think I should go without saying. Yeah. Uh, Jack Kirby. Oh my God! Could you know I met people who've had the pleasure of meeting Jack Kirby and like talking to him. But can you imagine? Hmm. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have been on the panel with Jim Lee, so that was check that one off the list. Tom McFarlane, because he was like such a huge childhood inspiration. Yeah. You know, I was uh, pretty much brought up at the library on comics, and the image guys are my generation. So, yeah. You know, I, I just love the artwork and the energy that came out of their work at that, that time period. Um, so, in addition to that, let's see who else we could. I think it would be. Great to have Todd, Jim, Stan, Jack, Frank Miller. I've never met Frank Miller. Mm. Man, yeah. that's, that's a good panel so far. <laughs> All right. Question number 10. This is the last one on the list, unless we need to go into overtime. But question number 10. What property needs a reboot? Any media, TV, movie, comic, whatever. What from your childhood needs to be remade? Oh, man. You know, I was really looking forward to The Crow mm -hmm. with, uh, with Jason Momoa. But I almost feel like Superman needs a reboot. And not to knock on Henry Cavill's uh, as Superman, I felt like he just wasn't, like what was written for him wasn't right. Right. He didn't become Superman until actually Justice League. Justice League, even though I didn't enjoy the movie, it was the movie where I felt he was the most Superman he had been through any of the movies he was in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, I felt like I feel like Superman just hasn't been done right, and it's unfortunate because, given the times that we're in and everything that's happening. Uh, and a symbol of what he represents as a character. He's like, I think he's the perfect character. All right, that's 10. Should we? Uh... That's 10. Do you need more time or are you good? Oh, I'm good. I'll show my my second camera first. But one thing I've noticed on mine is uh -huh. that A, I obviously don't know what the human face looks like. And <laughs> number number two, hands are extremely <laughs> hard for me to draw. But uh Ew. I didn't even do the flames. Oh, such a lazy artist. <laughs> I should send you the one I did, and then we should get it like framed side by side with a mat, and then you should present it to her. <laughs> I should. I should. Yeah. She, she, we may get restraining orders, but uh, <laughs> I should. <laughs> All right, Don, let's take a look at yours. There we go. And Can that was. All, yeah, yeah. That was all with your uh, offhand, right? Yeah, all right handed. You can tell, uh, totally colored. I don't even know where the lines are. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So obviously you have drawn faces before and I have not. I, I think I'm fairly good at drawing faces, but it was really <laughs> weird to uh, draw with the right hand. <laughs> Man, that was awesome. Yeah. And you do got to send that to me. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right, Don. Well, thank you very much for indulging me in that uh, little game. I know it was a, a, a painstaking thing. Carpal tunnel's probably setting in as we speak, but uh, 
<laughs> no, you know, I think I had, uh, I think I exercised decent posture. Uh, I, I try to do what I do with my left on my right. Just the coloring, man. Just the can't draw a straight line. If I had a weapon pointed to my head, and uh, apparently can't color within the lines. <laughs> All right, man. So one more time, this show is called Behind the Booth for a reason. Uh, it's to give everybody at home that chance if they're not able to make it to a convention. If for whatever reason, they've skipped you in real life. Uh, if I was to stop at your booth, pick up Pablo, give me your best 15-second uh, pitch on Pablo. Like I said, Pablo, uh, the gorilla, is about a cyborg gorilla that delivers pizza. He just wants to live a normal life. But the government that created him, they want their property back. And something a little more sinister is hunting him as well. Very cool, man. Very cool. Pick up Pablo. I'm telling you, one again, one of the best books I read in the last year. So Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that and your kind words. And thank you so much for having me on the show. Of course. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> This is so going on YouTube.